Go to my website right now and download my free course on alternate picking mastery. It contains five essential exercises that will take you to alternate picking mastery faster than you can imagine. And then I've included my method of how to lay out a practice plan in just one to two minutes that will absolutely boost your results like nothing you ever tried before. So go download it right now. It's free. I just discovered that David Wallerman, a great teacher, has a free course, two hours, that you can go download for free. That's why it's free. Sorry. Uh, you just click the link below this video and it'll take you right there. It got, it's got fundamental key insights on soloing and takes a foothold in the blues. And then you'll learn stuff like targeting court notes and doing all kinds of cool stuff that will really add to your soloing vocabulary. So he goes from fundamental into some concepts that's really going to expand your playing. So please go download it right now. Put me on hold, go click the link right now and then come back here. Okay. Uh, and it's important for you to have as much inspiration as, as humanly possible. So you want to get to the good stuff. And David is, is the good stuff. So, um, so uh, let's go on. <laughs> what this video is about, apart from David Wallerman, is um, a mistake I made. Because I was practicing so hard uh, for so long that I was used to this pattern of trying and failing all the time, right? So, and I hadn't really discovered the, the, the fantastic benefits of practicing perfectly all the way. So I was doing a lot of, you know, trying to play a run and then, you know, making a mistake halfway and then starting over, starting over, starting over, failing, starting over, saying, you know, thousands of times, like, you know, and I was just used to, every time I made a mistake, I would stop. So, and that, I repeated that pattern so many times so that I was, when I was performing, which was like, you know, 1% of the time I was playing, maybe one, you know, out of a thousand, because I was like, you know, at times I was practicing three, four, five, six hours uh, through some periods of time. And then I would, you know, not practice for a, for a week or two and then, you know, some intensity and then wild intensity again. But, you know, I was playing like, you know, once a week with the guys and that was kind of the, the difference between the two. And then my brain simply learned to stop whenever I, I made a mistake. And then suddenly I was watching, you know, um, these guys on TV uh, playing and I noticed that they were actually making a lot of mistakes. So there was a lot of inconsistencies in their playing. But it was like, it doesn't, it didn't exist. They just played on like, you know, you know, that was a little weird sound there. There was a couple of notes I didn't hit that well, but it, it had no effect. It had no, you know, effect on me because I was going from there to there. So mistakes doesn't matter. And that's a different pattern in the brain. And you have to learn to run that pattern as well. And you actually have to counteract the practicing pattern of making mistakes and then stopping and then trying to correct those mistakes. And, and you have to focus on that when you practice. So I recommend an exercise that's really going to handle this. And that is that you act as if you are performing. And when you are playing over a jam track, for instance, there's a really cool practice method where you can learn uh, by mistake, by, you know, trying, you know, if you have something going in the background, like a... Right? Something like that. Then that's a really cool... This is the opposite practice method. Uh, that you go... Uh, okay, let me see if I can end that line, right? So that's a... No, no, de, um, again, yeah. Okay, then I play that. Ten times, right? Then I try to come up with another line. And if I don't get that right, I just I practice coming up with lines and once I've come up with something that really is together, I play it 10 times and I do that over and over again. And I used to do that, but that also meant that I was making a lot of mistakes and then I was trying to correct them in real time. So the way to counteract that is to make sure that you continue even though you make mistakes. And one of the, I'm going to give you two exercises here. One of them is just to keep on playing. 
just to have an endless flow of notes, and it doesn't matter if you have to rest on one note just to keep it going, but you just keep it going all the time. Let me see, see if I can do that again. Right? So we just go. You might start with just playing the scale up and down. I mean, G. G7, dominant 7 in the background, just playing the, the C uh, blues, uh, G blues scale, right? So you just. And then no matter what you do, you do not stop. And it's kind of, ugh, it's counterintuitive in the beginning because you want to stop because you... And if you have to, just stay on one note. And I'm pretty good at it now because I've been practicing it a lot, right? But that's a, an essential exercise, and the whole exercise is not so much in the beginning about sounding, you know, cre <laughs> creating great little runs. It's just about keeping on to break that pattern in the brain you have of stopping when you make a mistake, which is disastrous when you're out performing in front of others. The second exercise is simply a matter of, of, of soloing and then pushing through that point where you would stop, like you play a lick. <laughs> And then you, just, you simply, you make it happen, you end it like you were performing in front of people. Do not give yourself the option of just stopping and, oh, I have to do that over because there's no over doing it. <laughs> you can't do it over when you're performing, right? So you act as if you were performing, but without the risk of failing in front of others, right? So you, you, you put something in the background, right? And then you simply just... And you really try to play something that you would like to play in front of others. Don't just play anything. Really try and say, okay, this is my moment. This is my soloing moment. And then practice not stopping when you make a mistake. Practice concealing it, actually, right? So, oops. Right, or... I went a little slower than I should have, but then I just do it even more, right? You know, whatever you do, use it. Try to use it as if you were in a performing situation. And that's an essential exercise that will keep you out of the terrible feeling of being so unprepared for performing. So it will take away some of the nervousness as well because you are practicing performing each and every day. So first exercise, playing, play a run with whatever technique you have on whatever level you can play it. If you can play relatively fast, then play relatively fast. If you can't, just stay at a level where you can keep the notes going. And then not, not stopping is the key here, even if you have to play just one note before you can move on. Secondly, play a so or start soloing and really do your best to play cool licks, to play stuff that you would play in front of others. But then if you make a mistake, just go on, push yourself through that, right? So you, 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 you take the, the reaction of, oh, I have to stop because I made a mistake. And then you, you turn that around and make it, oh, I made a mistake. Let's go on right away, right? So, and I can't tell you what a difference these two exercises made for me. You know, a week, two weeks of doing this every day, it was like I was a totally new person when I was playing, just when rehearsing with the guys. So this really makes a huge, huge difference. So um, have fun with it and go download David Wallerman's course. Subscribe for more free videos. Do it. Do it now. Do it.